inside America's boardrooms. The informational show for board members and corporate secretaries. Brought to you with knowledge partners, NASDAQ, the Center for Audit Quality, and PwC. Along with content contributors, Equilar, Meridian Compensation Partners, Wilson Sonsini Goodridge and Rosati, Donnelly Financial Solutions, and the Society for Corporate Governance. Welcome to this edition of Inside America's Boardrooms. I'm T.K. Kerstetter, the CEO of Boardroom Resources, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to the show. But this isn't just any ordinary show. This is our New Year's show, and uh, minus the hats this year. But and champagne. And the champagne. Uh, but um, what we want to do is, at this time of the year, we always take a look forward to see what issues boards are going to have to be dealing with in the boardroom um, relative to governance and other issues that relate to um, overseeing the company's operations. So with that, I want to introduce my guest who's always in this seat for this special show, and that is Cindy Fernelli, who's the executive director of the Center for the Center for Audit Qual Quality. Cindy, welcome to the show. Thank you, TK. It's pleasure to have you back. And I hope you've had a good chance to think about the future, because uh, that's what we're here for. I have my crystal ball all ready to go. So I'm going to let you start. And I want to, what's your first issue that you think boards should be aware of and preparing for for 2017? Well, you mentioned governance, and so I am going to go with governance with a capital G. Being a creature of Washington, D.C., uh, it is hard not to be focused on. We're having, for the first time in eight years, a new administration coming in, and with that, a new party. So we've got the new administration with President-elect Trump coming in at the end of January. We have a new Congress who is now uh, the majority of Republicans. So there's a lot of... Uh, challenges, I think, anytime you have a new administration coming in, but also opportunities. And so I think this is going to be a time for all of us in the governance space to be looking at what's happening in Washington, because I think you're going to see, well, I know you're going to see a new SEC chair come in. There will be two new SEC commissioners and most likely a new PCAOB chair. So these are all things that will have an impact on boards of directors, audit committees, auditors, investors, and really the whole panoply of stakeholders in the financial reporting space. So we all should pay attention to that uh, and look for those opportunities. Um, I do think you're going to see Congress uh, talk about and take on uh, some issues related to Dodd-Frank. So that, too, will have an impact on board of directors and audit committees and, again, everybody in the financial reporting space. My first one could be affected by the SEC change and the administration change, and that is the universal ballot. Chairman White in July had, at the um, uh, corporate secretaries event, had launched out the idea that she was supportive of the universal ballot where now you don't have to pick a whole um, group of directors and go with a, a whole ballot that you can individually pick people and uh, do it that way. So um, then there wasn't any noise for a while and then all of a sudden we heard uh, at the end of the year um, in December we heard that she was putting it out for comment okay and that she was a proponent then we heard the council of institutional investors be supportive of that uh, my take is that the new administration will and the new sec chair and commissioners might have an impact on that okay but we'll have to see but from the board's perspective they need to just keep an eye on that and become educated themselves i think that's right and you know, there's a lot of talk when there's a new administration, uh, and that I've seen some press around this, that uh, the Trump 
uh, transition team sent letters to the SEC and the PCOB saying no new rulemaking. That is very common when there's an administration change. That is nothing, I don't think, unique to the Trump administration. And yet, still, the agencies continue to run on a day-by-day -day basis. And I think with respect to universal ballot and others, uh, big ticket items that are on the SEC's agenda under Chair White, I think it's been further complicated by the fact that she does not have a full complement of commissioners. And so there's always a, a delicate balance of do you go forward and put something forward that you don't have full support of, even if only because you don't have a full commission, or do you wait until you get a full complement of commissioners and then go in and talk to them about the benefits of a particular rule or standard? And, and I think that's something that you might think, see happening with my second uh, issue to watch, which is the auditor's report. Okay, so give me, the, give me your information behind that. So for the last few years across the globe, regulators have been modernizing and enhancing the auditor's report. So um, everybody has retained the pass-fail binary report, but added additional information on top of it. So the PCOB has been looking in that as well. And I think they were ready to go with their final standard uh, this year, but it's my understanding that that might be delayed because they would like the full support of a full commission, which we're not going to have until January or February. So it's unclear where that stands, but regardless, I think it will be promulgated, the new standard, and it's important for boards of directors and particularly audit committees to pay attention to that because it will revamp the auditor's report and include something called critical audit matters our CAMs, and so that is something that the auditor will have to include in its audit report, and those are things that get communicated, that rise to the level of importance, that they get communicated to the audit committee. And so now they will also be disclosed to uh, financial statement users and those people reading the auditor's report. So it's a big change. I think it's a change that is good, but it's something that audit committees need to be having conversations with their auditors about when this new report comes forward, because it's going to be a change. So we learned, just learned something new, CAMs. Camps. Yeah, we'll have to remember that. Yes, yes, because then you'll be hearing about them. And it's critical audit matters. Critical audit matters. We think that the standard will go into effect in 2019. There is a possibility it could go into effect in 2018, which, as we all know, will be here before we know it. We'll be sitting in this chair. I know it's really 12 months from now, yeah. but it'll feel like yeah. tomorrow. So um, I going to pick my side up here so that I want to make sure that we get this in. So my next one, I'm going to take a little turn. The thing that I want to make sure the boards are aware of is director compensation, okay? For the first time this year, we've seen some court cases move forward that investors thought that directors had some egregious amount of pay, okay? And it turns out that the Delaware courts agreed with the investors because there was no structure to how that particular board was going to be paid. But it was a little bit of a shot across the bow, okay? And we see investors start to bring the issue of director compensation up. And so um, the, the getting around that, first of all, it, we must be running out of issues if that's what we're talking about now because it's such a knit to the grand scheme of things that it's, it's a little frustrating in that sense. But the way to protect yourself is just make sure that you're using a peer group so that you're not too far out of realm with what companies around you are doing. Make it clear to investors how this is going to work and have some cap. Don't make it the kind of thing that all of a sudden you see this big number for, for board members. So you're doing good, so I'm anxious to hear what your third one is. You're really... Well, my third one is an oldie but goodie. It's something we talked about last year. It was on my list last year, and I don't think it's gone away, and that's cybersecurity. 
So if anything, it has become even more important for boards to pay attention to this because the cyber criminals and even foreign governments are becoming much more sophisticated in their attacks and how they're getting involved. We talked about um, the government and that's something that was uh, a bit of a subtext in the yeah. election. Uh, so I, I think it behooves companies to make sure that they're on top of that, uh, to make sure that they understand what the board understands, what the company's cybersecurity risk management program is. Uh, again, in that oversight role, not in the deep dive. And I know there's been a lot of debate as to whether or not a board should have a cybersecurity expert on it, whether they should have a special cyber committee. Um, my own personal view is they shouldn't have either of those things. Uh, I think there's a dearth of cybersecurity experts out there, and you want those people to stay current, and as soon as they become your cyber expert, uh, they, they might get stale because it's such a fastly evolving area. Yeah. And then you use the slot for something that's too narrow. Too your narrow in your focus. And I think um, same thing with a committee. Uh, I think that cyber is one of your overall risks that you should be managing. Uh, so I don't know that you need a special cyber security uh, committee. It should be part of the risk work that the board does. Um, I also think that uh, we're going to see the government becoming involved maybe, uh, although I think those in the marketplace really are hoping that there will be a, a um, grassroots way, a market-driven way, a principles-based way to attack cybersecurity because companies are so different in what they need. And so I don't know that you want to see regulation in this area, but rather the development and encouragement of evolving best practices. But I think with the new administration, it's something that we're going to have to look at. And then I will also note that the audit profession is looking at ways to provide uh, assurance over a company's cybersecurity risk management program and their disclosures, uh, bringing to bear the auditor's uh, core values of independence, objectivity, and skepticism. So I think this is going to be a big year for cyber. Um, unfortunately, I'm hoping not for attacks, but for how we all try to manage our cybersecurity risk. Yeah. It is clearly the great unknown. I mean, it, really it just is. It, it can take a company down. It, uh, look at uh, look at power companies and whatever. What could happen? I mean, the attention to this is endless and and it's like quicksilver because as soon as you get your arms around it and, and you you've created a good program for your company today things change so quickly and evolve so quickly so you can never rest you can never ease up you always have to keep your your foot on the accelerator to keep up so it's it's something that i know is probably frustrating for companies uh, because you can't build a good program that What's good today right. isn't necessarily good tomorrow, and that's got to be frustrating, yeah. but so important. Well, and all the board has so much experience in every other part of, of the business that they can offer their experiences. Well, this is something that probably most of the board, it's new to them, okay? And even if you have experience in it, this attack or this attempted attack is so much different than the next one because the, the uh, villains, if you will, and I think they are villains, are so varied in their approaches. So there are so many different kinds of attacks and enemies out there. So, and that's assuming that you know you've been attacked. Yes, right? yes. So, well, uh, you know, we've talked about this for the whole year and we had the FBI in and they have resources that are available to companies for cyber and economic espionage. Um, we sat and talked about the risk committee and or versus the audit committee and heard where it should live. Yeah, we've heard all different stories about how companies have handled it and there is no right way for that. So let's hope that this isn't the biggest story in the sense of what you know, companies being attacked and brought down by this, but um, it, 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 it certainly is something that we have to 
pay attention to. So the, the last thing I would say on that is I think that we have shifted our focus from if you get attacked to when you get attacked, which is good in the sense that I think we've all come to accept that it is going to happen, and what's important is how a company reacts to it. You know, how do you contain it? How do you disclose it? How do you react to it? Which, it's sad that we, we, we have to become complacent that we will get attacked, but at least I think there's a realistic expectation that it's all about the recovery and the reaction than it is the actual attack. That people are more realistic that it is going to happen, which, as long as you do have a good plan and you execute on it, quickly, I think should give companies some comfort that we all know it's yeah. going to happen. Well, Cindy, it's always a pleasure. And uh, we both enjoy this show because we get to wish all of our viewers a and happy each other. and each other a happy and prosperous new year. And we hope, um, again, that goes to viewers, all our sponsors and partners. We really appreciate that. That will conclude this edition of Inside America's Boardrooms and the last show of the year. So we hope you'll join us next year when we take a look at new critical topics that will make you a better board member or committee member. So we'll see you then. Join us again next week for Inside America's Boardrooms. Brought to you with knowledge partners NASDAQ, the Center for Audit Quality, and PwC along with content contributors Equilar, Meridian Compensation Partners, Wilson Sonsini Goodridge and Rosati, Donnelly Financial Solutions, and the Society for Corporate Governance.